Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 as we are playing as Austria Hungary in the Battle for the Bosporus expansion. So, I just wanted to take a look here uh, what Japan has been doing. Yeah, they've already lost some territory here. Uh, yeah, it seems like they're having trouble against China. They have done a naval invasion here, which is successful. Uh, but thus far, they do seem to be having some issues getting China defeated. Uh, thus, they haven't really been doing all the naval invasions of the Allied territory. There's one here, though, on the Solomon Islands. So they did that one. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we have all these territories here being freed by the British. Uh, but yeah, thus far, they haven't really done much as far as taking out that allied territory which would be super helpful for us this episode we're gonna be declaring war on Italy and Bulgaria as long as we get the the war goal, of course which we should uh, there's only one thing we need to do here and that is first I want to go ahead and start building something here uh, start or excuse me researching something here uh, there's a couple different things we can get I think we'll do the foreign department first yeah I think that's the one we're gonna get here yeah let's go and get that one it takes a little bit of extra civilian factories but that's okay and then we're also going to want to go ahead and get this guy uh, set up here in Italy to start building up an Intel network. All right, excellent. Let's let it play. So let's speed five here. And yeah, a lot of countries are going to be joining that Italian faction. Or excuse me, the Japanese faction. And pretty much anybody who's fascist is going to join them. So yeah, you got the Venezuelans joining them now. So yeah, you're going to have a four-way war where every single faction is at war with each other. France just capitulated, the Germans just stomped all over them. This is kind of a negative in a way because now the Italians don't have the French here that they have to fight, but of course they will have the Germans. Uh, but will the Germans be there? Uh, I guess that's the question. So the Spanish didn't get much, which is good because we didn't want the common turn to get very much in this treaty here. Uh, so they just got a few French provinces and, and Germany pretty much did most of the work there against them. Now this is probably going to change up our participation a lot. Yeah, because the Germans are in it now. We're still at 64% of the total participation for the war though, since we conquered Romania, Yugoslavia, and Albania. Uh, but yeah, you're going to see a, a four-way war uh, where you have, and Peru just joined as well, but yeah, where you have the Japanese Italian faction, uh, which you're going to see they're all up in the Americas uh, because of uh, the common turn. And I do expect as Mexico attacks them here uh, that it's going to result in some of these countries uh, you know being attacked that are in the Japanese faction so therefore the Comintern will also be at war with Japan and their faction so you'll have the Comintern faction at war with everybody you have the Japanese uh, co-prosperity sphere at war with everybody you'll have the allies at war with everybody and then you'll have our faction the central powers at war with everybody, uh, with all four. So all four factions are going to be fighting each other, guys, at the same time. That's what's going to end up happening here, guys. Uh, I, I don't see how it couldn't. All right. So yeah, just more. And the big part of that is the America conflict. That's why it's going to pull in so many people. Because the common turn, uh, the only ones that wouldn't be at war with each other would be the common turn and the, the, the fascist faction. But because the Mexicans are going to continue to declare war on countries here, and some of those countries are going to be fascist, and then they're going to join the Japanese faction, and that's how you're going to get the common turn also at war with the Japanese faction. So it's just going to be crazy, guys. Crazy four-way conflict. All right, so we did get our focus done. Excellent. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we want to do next. So we could go ahead and start moving down here to get that claim on Holland. Uh, there's a lot of other things to get though, and somebody told me we, we need to go to get this one here, the Blood Agreement. Uh, so I think we're going to go ahead and do that now. Now, of course, there's a lot of great stuff to get, guys. Uh, but yeah, let's go and go for that one first before we do anything else here. Which means we have to go for both of these. I think both of them are required. No, you only need one of them. Uh, so in that case, we'll go with the Army Experience. And let's go once a non aggression pact. We'll accept that. I'm not planning on fighting the Comet Turn just yet. So yeah, we'll accept that. Now, we can't declare war because we don't have a war goal on them. Uh, and, you know, just because we got claims does not give us a war goal. And apparently, oh yeah, because of Japan. So this is the problem. We'd have to, ooh, I didn't even think about that. With them joining the Japanese faction, we're not going to be able to, oh, that sucks. I didn't think about that fact. You know, with Italy in the faction, and I completely forgot that we had 
signed a peace treaty with Japan or signed a non-aggression pact with Japan because I didn't I didn't think about the fact of them joining with the Italian faction. All right, that really puts us in a a problem here, guys. You can see the Italians have also come up along the border now, so it wouldn't have been an easy conflict here. Anyways, uh, we, I mean, it would still been easy, uh, but we would have had to actually fight some of them. All right, so that's quite unfortunate. So I don't know who we're going to fight next. I guess Poland. I assume we'd fight Poland next, so we might want to move those troops over. Yeah, there's really no choice here, guys. Uh, we can't fight Greece either, so, you know, I guess it's Poland. Poland's the, uh, the next fight. Do we want to move all of our troops over, though? I mean, I feel like there's just no way that they'll be able to attack us. Because yeah, they're not, they're not going to have any, I mean, they could end up getting a focus themselves and maybe they'll attack us. I believe you can still attack somebody if your leader has a non-aggression pact. And maybe not, though. I'm not entirely sure uh, if they'll be able to attack us or not. It's hard to say. But essentially, we know we're not going to be attacking them anytime soon. Yeah, that's just a real bummer, man. I didn't even think about the fact that we had signed that treaty with them. So yeah, we'll just send all of our troops over here because there's nobody else to fight, guys. Yeah, there's nobody. So let's just go ahead and send these both of these armies over there. So we could do a, a quicker invasion and try and get as much territory as we can. And so maybe like that. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and send them over there. We'll keep these here, I suppose. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and take these guys off too. And just go ahead and set this up like so. We're going to give these guys their planning bonuses. Uh, one thing that somebody brought up in a, the previous up episode is about whether you get the planning bonus when you manually control your divisions as I do. This is a common misconception from what I've seen. A lot of people seem to think that you don't get planning bonuses if you manually control your troops. That's not true. You do. Uh, so essentially, whenever a division moves or attacks, then they lose their planning bonus. If you manually give those orders, manually give those attack or movement orders, then they lose it quicker. So that's the penalty for using manual control, is that you lose your uh, planning bonus quicker. But you do still get the planning bonus. So that's why I still do the, uh, you know, the offensive orders, even though I don't let them use it, because we do still get those planning bonuses, guys. So yeah, this is a real bummer, man. Uh, does, does Poland have a faction yet? They do not. I think they're going communist, and I assume they would then join... They could join either side, really. It's hard to say. Probably they would join the Allies when we attack them, because we're already at war with the Allies. However, once they go communist, they won't necessarily join the Allies. They could join the Comintern instead. Uh, so we have to attack them. Basically what that means is we have to attack them before they go communist to ensure that they join the Allies and not the Comintern. So we get the uh, uh, the cryptology apartment department done. Let's go and see what we want to get next. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff to get. Yeah, a lot of good things that we need to get here. Could do some more, uh, get some passive defense here. Could also try and get, you know, intel up with these. But I think we're gonna go ahead and get the decryption power first, so we can decrypt a little bit faster. And who are we gonna decrypt first? I don't think we'd get Poland done in time, 480 days. Yeah, I assume we'd declare war on them by then. It's also not really entirely necessary. Could do the Soviet Union first. Yeah, let's do the, I really don't know how this conflict's gonna break out, but let's do the, the Soviet Union first. Not aggression pact, we're just gonna decline the ones with the fascist countries now at this point. Yeah, that's, that's such a shame, guys. That kind of went down this way. We gotta hope that the Italians don't end up conquering or attacking us because then we'd have no troops on our border. It'd take us a while to get over there. Especially if we were already at war with Poland and the Soviets. Uh, but you get the field hospitals. Uh, so that's awesome. We're gonna do the engineer companies next. But yeah, such a shame, man. If that didn't work out the way I would've liked. You gotta be careful with those non-aggression packs sometimes. You know, you're, you sign them and then, yeah, we're gonna decline that. You sign those non-aggression packs and then they, they come back and bite you later. Yeah, we're gonna decline all of these. Although we won't be able to stop them from, from sending them at us. All right, so yeah, just kind of letting this play, kind of building up our equipment. Uh, you know, we still have some serious uh, shortages, obviously. Uh, we might want to go ahead and get some more factories going towards the light self-propelled. We got the rubber processing, so that's gonna help. Uh, but we still have to continue to go down these. Uh, I think we'll do 
I think we'll do one more for the rubber. rubber trading for rubber is going to be a problem, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And so what we might want to go ahead and do is take a look and see... Yeah, we're still working on these right now. So because we haven't gotten them done, we're still going to be short on rubber. So we'll just wait until we get those finished constructing. We need to get radar stations as well. Uh, we don't even think we've researched that yet, so that's another thing we'll have to get. Really help us out if we put them on the coast here. Eventually put those naval bombers out there. Uh, I've been asked a lot about building a navy up. This is not going to be a naval focus campaign, guys. I mean, we have, what, two dockyards? Yeah, we have two dockyards right now. We could build more, but it's not without a cost. You know, you build more dockyards and then you're not building other stuff. It's not like there's not a ton of things we need, guys. And so, for every, you know, second that we're building dockyards, we're not building the things that we need more. And then you look at, like, what are you getting from that? So you're getting dockyards, and so you can build ships, right? Well, that's great, I guess. Do we have any tech to build ships? We don't. We absolutely don't, guys. We have, like, no tech. Uh, so if we were to, like, look at this this naval tech, I mean, we don't even have the basic naval tech for anything. So now we have to research the naval tech to be able to build, to build the ships. And, you know, I was planning on doing that for submarines anyway because we are going to get a submarine fleet. And submarine tech, there's not a lot to it. Overall, we can get that fairly quick. But to build a surface fleet like some people are wanting me to do... I mean, we would have to, to get a lot of text, guys. And so we could do that. But then you got to look at the cost. What is the cost? Everything has a cost. And so if we're not researching, if we're researching naval tech, then what are we not researching? A whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff, guys. You can't become a spy master now, so we'll go ahead and do that. That'll get us another operative. So yeah, if we're getting naval tech, then we're not getting other stuff. So there's, there's always a cost, guys. I know that we are short on some equipment for our garrisons. It's okay. Support equipment is a bit short. Uh, so yeah, if we're, we're researching naval techs, then we're not researching techs for our army and for our air force, uh, which is more important in my opinion. Because then you look at that, you know, you, you spend all that, all those resources. So you, you know, build all those uh, dockyards. And do we want to research this or, or use our experience? I don't think we do, guys. Nah, we'll just go the slow way here. So, I mean, yeah, you spend all those resources, the uh, the factories to build the dockyards, the tech slots and time to uh, research all of those naval techs. And Malta has capitulated. Looks like the Germans invaded them. Yep. Yeah, we could invade allied territory, but again, I think they probably control the sea here. Although, maybe not. I don't know if they have any access here because the Italians are here and they control the straits. So, yeah, I think the allies might not have access here. Because they can't get through there, and they're also at war with Spain, so they can't get through here. So they have no way to get into the Mediterranean. Now, they do probably already have ships here. Yeah, you can see they have a bunch of enemy ships here. Yeah, I'm surprised they were actually able to get the naval invasion done. Yeah, we'll just let the Germans do that. We're going to focus on the war against Poland, which would be next. Of course, we do have to finish this one, and then if we were to get this te this uh, focus here, which the reason why somebody told me to go for that is they said that it can help fix the manpower issues. I have no idea what that that focus does because it just says it fires the event. So uh, maybe maybe if we read it and then it would tell us a bit more. Yeah, if we kind of went over here. I mean, it does have to do with rearmament. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that uh, treaty will do something that help us there. So we get the uh, new infantry equipment. So we get that updated here in a second. Let's go ahead and get a new tech first. We already have something going here. Could get the medium uh, tanks. I mean, we have so much stuff that we need to get right now. I don't think that would be for the best. And yeah, we could start working on the planes if we wanted to. That'd be one option. Or we could start doing the radar. I think let's finish up. You know what? Yeah, let's go and go with the radar, guys. Let's go with radio detection. Get our first radar station. That would be helpful, especially for our naval bombers. Which I don't know if we have enough to put into the sky yet. We could put like an air wing of 25 bombers. Just to bomb anybody, any enemies that might be going through here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put some some naval bombers here, guys. So let's do, let's do like 25. I'll have three to replace the losses here. And I guess we just have to hope that they don't have any fighters here. In fact, we might want to go ahead and put fighters here to cover our bombers because they could very well have some fighters here. Uh, you know, the Italians, I mean. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to have these guys train up. We could also have them bomb, too. Uh, the close air support, they do okay at that. 
Uh, so let's go and send these 200 here. And that can help us out there. And then, yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and send the... Well, I don't really want to take casualties for the close air support. I want to use them here in Poland. So you know what? We won't do that. No, nah, we're not going to do that, guys. Do we have enough fighters in the stockpile to increase this? I think we do. All right, we'll wait for them to lose that experience. And then get them training here. All right, excellent. So these guys are training as well. All right, so we'll be flying over here, seeing if we can't bomb anything. We could also attempt to bomb the Italian ports. I don't actually want to destroy the Italian Navy, though. I want the Italians to fight the Allied Navy. So I'm not looking to bomb them specifically. I'm hoping to bomb Allied uh, ships that might be going through here, although we're not seeing any at this moment. So I'm just gonna upgrade that. Still have the tanks training up, apparently. Uh, they did get a lot of equipment uh, and, and new manpower, so with us making those adjustments to them, so I guess it's not surprising that they're taking a little while to get their training done. Uh, we're actually good on manpower. Yeah, we're, we're looking pretty good on manpower. We should take a look at the equipment, and apparently we bypassed that? Yeah, I guess that was bypassed. Oh, because it had to do it with Romania. But yeah, we got that done. Uh, so now we can do the established Air Force and the Army Maneuvers. And uh, this will get us a land doctrine bonuses. We might want to slow down on... Let me see how many we have here. Because uh, we are going through home defense. So that's one research bonus. That's two. Is that it? Can we get these ones here? Oh, you can go this way. Yeah, you can get that one there. Okay, I didn't know that you could you could get that one and get this one. All right, so that makes this route even better. Interesting. Okay, so that's two bonuses for doctrines. It looks like that, that's it. So we, we only need to leave two open on the land doctrines. Uh, we do have to select something here, don't we? We're going for the, uh, trying to get the, the claims over here in Poland. And the Germans might end up starting the war as well. They're getting Danzig for guarantees. Maybe not, though. They might actually end up guaranteeing them. And I don't think that would stop us from declaring war on them, though. We could just justify our war goal on our own. How long would that take? Probably longer than if we were to just get the claims. Because getting the claims, I think, would speed this up. Let me just double check and see... Yeah, 160 days. Yeah, I, I think it might be, you know, we're doing the 70 days. And then I, I think doing it for a claim is faster. Uh, it might not be overall faster, though. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll just do the focus, guys. This lets us get our, our equipment situation dealt with. And, you know, we did have those, those early conflicts, so it's fine to kind of sit here for a little bit and take our time. Uh, let's go with some passive defense. You know, actually, let's go and get the, the bonuses up here. I know we need to build a lot of stuff, guys. But I want to get those done. We do have an operative that can be recruited, so let's go and recruit somebody here. Probably the sexy seducer. Everybody likes its glasses. We do have a commando here, though, and commandos are great. Yeah, maybe we'll do the commando instead. Yeah, let's do the commando. All right, so let's go and... We're probably going to continue getting intel. And let's go and get it against Poland, since they're our next enemy. All right, so we're getting we're having problems with getting steel from the Germans. Maybe they changed up their laws. Yeah, we're still having problems here. All right, so that's unfortunate. We'll have to trade with somebody else. I, I suppose we'll we'll trade with China. China's kind of a natural ally in a way. Somebody we want to help out. Don't want to help the common turn out at all. But at the same time, they're fighting the Allies, so could help them too, I suppose. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. That's what we'll do. We'll help China, we'll help Spain. I imagine Spain would be the, the target of British invasions, but maybe not. They could also be focus of invasions of France or Germany. Yeah, we just don't know what the, the British are doing. But once the America finish up back at home, which they are losing to Mexico right now, probably because they're so involved with their civil war. So yeah, but it looks like they're pushing them back. And they also did a naval invasion here, so Mexico will probably be defeated, which means that they might not have time to declare war on all these countries, which might result in them going to war with the Comintern. Uh, Germany uh, canceled lend lease, but now is starting one back up. Probably something that they uh, were giving us that, that we didn't need anymore. So yeah, we have a lot of manpower, uh, and really just the equipment's the, the problem right now. Let's go ahead and go with the armor bonus. 
And then let's see if we can build more troops here. I know we're still short certain types of equipment, but for the most part, yeah, I think we could go ahead and train a few more of these, uh, a few more tank units. Yeah, we'll train one more, I guess. Yeah, we're still short light tanks. Yeah, we're short a lot of stuff. All right, so let's go and get some regular infantry then. That's really all we have. Oh, what we need to do is create a new design with our army experience. Yeah, I forgot I wanted to do that. So we'll do that here in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and get, we'll, we'll do that now, actually. So what we're going to want to do, it'd probably be quicker to just, or, or cheaper experience-wise, to do this based off of, let me see how much this would cost. Yeah, let me see how much this would cost and see if it's cheaper. So we're going to want to remove these. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a 10 width division design just for defending ports. And that's not going to have, I mean, they could technically stay 20 width, I suppose. I suppose we could keep them 20 width and then just take the artillery out of them. I guess that works. And then we wouldn't need as many. Yeah, I suppose we'll do that, guys. We'll keep them 20 width. And then it also saves experience. Uh, so we'll just take out the artillery here. And then add some infantry. And I'm just trying to see experience-wise how much this costs. I know that this is not how we'd want to do this. Actually, we should have kept them here. Uh, because obviously we're changing up our 20 width. Uh, so as far as what we have here, I think we'll just keep the field hospitals and the uh, engineer companies. So this would be 35 experience. If we were to make a whole new division design, it would be uh, probably a lot more. Yeah, it'd be a lot more. Uh, so this is the best way to do it, to take this and duplicate it. I kind of wish I hadn't done that. I just would have done that straight up in the beginning. We'll just call them garrisons. Oops, I changed that setting off. We do still need names, guys. I haven't gone through all the comments from the last episode just yet, so you might have suggested some names, but I didn't see any yet. Uh, so yeah, we need name suggestions for all of our, I guess we can just change these up to infantry, uh, for all of our division designs. Yeah, these will just be 20 width infantry des division designs with the, uh, the things that will help them out when it comes to uh, defending here. I know they won't have good attack, uh, but I just don't want to give them artillery. It's just too expensive for a garrison division. So I think this is good. It only requires the uh, little bit of support equipment and infantry equipment, which we have plenty of. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and save this. And then we're going to build some of these guys so they can replace these nine divisions that we have here. And we're going to want a lot more than nine as well. Because remember, once we attack Italy, whenever that is, we're going to need to uh, defend all the ports that they have as well. Uh, so let's go with quite a few. Maybe like 15 for right now. Yeah, I think 15 would be good. A little bit of overkill, of course, in what we need here. But, you know, we'll have that for the future. And then we'll go ahead and build out some more of the regular infantry uh, division designs as well. Uh, so we'll have nine to put over to here, three into that one. So that leaves six, six left. So maybe four to have like 10, uh, 10 divisions for an army. Yeah, it looks good. All right, let's kind of let this play again and get those units built and get ready for the conflict with uh, Poland. Now, as far as equipment, I don't know if we can make any adjustments. Looks like we might need to put more into infantry equipment, another factory into that. Are we repairing? We are about to start repairing soon, so let's go and get more military factories. Definitely need a lot more. And I suppose we'll have to start going with the 50% eventually. And I want to say this is all court territory here. But yeah, we're just going to wait. We're just building this area here. Now get some more military factories. Try and get this equipment situation dealt with. We could probably pull from Motorize. It looks like Motorize is no longer as short as it once was. And that will kind of help out some of our other needs. Yeah, like uh, the light self propelled artillery and the, the tanks. Yeah, let's go and pull back on this, guys. Let's pull back to like six. We also need more factories going towards planes as well. Uh, so we did finish up the research here. Excavation, let's go and go with the advanced machine tools now. We're almost in 1940 here. All right, so, yeah, just such a bummer, man. We are able to do this. Now, I don't know what all the Germans are doing. Looks like they're maybe planning for invasions of the Low Countries. Yeah, that's what it seems like. They got some troops up on that Spanish border as well for if we were to go to war with the uh, Comintern, they would have to fight them. 
yeah, still having some uh, problems, uh, some some lack of uh, support equipment for our garrisons. And they did cancel that lend lease. Are we good on support equipment? No, we're not. They must have maybe maybe ran low on it. Yeah, I assume they might be running low too. Palestine has capitulated. The Italians have conquered all of Egypt now. Wow, so they actually control the straits here. Remember that the Spanish control the straits here? So the Allies have no access to the Mediterranean right now. Zero access, so that's nice. Uh, we finished up the Air Force Department. Let's go in and go with the Economy Civilian. Just kind of knock some of those out. Get our operatives, all that kind of good stuff. Which we should be getting an operative from having two independent countries in our faction, right? Because I didn't see anything on that recruit an operative now. Just take a look here. Yeah, we are getting one from the two faction members. Okay. And then we're recruiting the other one from having enough upgrades now. Right, excellent. So yeah, we're getting our intel up in uh, Italy and in Poland. Maybe I should do the Soviet Union first instead of Italy because we might actually end up going to war with the common term before we can go to war with Italy. We're going to be quite delayed, guys, by this because of uh, the damn uh, inability to cancel the non-aggression pact. Let's go ahead and make sure we're not doing non-aggression packs with these guys here. We got the improved rubber processing, but yeah, really, really regretting having done that. So could get more oil from the refineries. Could also just make it so we're more efficient with our oil. As of right now, oil is good, so I'm not going to get any of those. There's just too much other stuff to get, and you know we're we're now at a point where we want to go ahead and start getting the 1940 tax. Uh, so maybe planes first. Yeah, we might go ahead and get the planes first. Could get those bonuses here. Maybe we'll get the passive bonuses first. Yeah, I think that might be for the best. So yeah, let's get the, the passive bonuses. We could also get this one. I suppose that's the best way to really open this up. Get that extra research bonus. And then we'll go for those passive bonuses for our infantry equipment. Not a lot of troops on the border, guys. Nope. They've got too many fronts to defend. The Polish do. All right, so we've got another factory. Let's go and get assigned. Let me just take a look and see what we need uh, right now. Still really short on the support equipment. Uh, the tank situation is not quite where we want it either. We could build more tanks if we were able to get these built a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put one towards the tanks. And then, yeah, I almost want to just go ahead and put it at full 15 towards the support equipment so we just get that done, man. Uh, we no longer need the to trade for as much rubber. So maybe you go ahead and pull back. Yeah, we'll pull back with the Belgians. And then we still need more steel as well. We can try with Turkey for one factory's worth. And yeah, there's just no there's no steel to trade for. Good God. Yeah, that's terrible. All right, well, the best option here is either Japan or Chile or Mexico. I guess we'll do... I almost want to help Mexico out, honestly. Uh, though that would require convoys to go across the Atlantic, so that would be bad. So would the Chile one. Man, there's nobody to trade with. They might just have to go with the... Yeah, that's a ripoff, but... I don't want to send convoys out there. Oh, well, I guess you got a couple here. They have six. Yeah, we can do uh, Norway, I suppose. And did we already have problems? Yeah, we're already having problems. The Turks... All right, so we can't trade with Turkey. We're also having problems here against Spain. All right, so we'll have to go down here instead and trade with... I don't want to trade with the Greeks. I'm not trying to help them out at all. Or the Polish. I suppose we'll have to do Sweden. And even then, we're still having issues here, guys, getting all the goodies. Oh, and yeah, we're also having problems with uh, Germany. Yeah, this kind of sucks, man. I have a lot of trouble with the steel. Uh, I just can't get the steel that we need. Uh, so that's going to be a major issue. Uh, so let's go ahead and... What do we want to get here? We could do Recon Company. Could go ahead and get some some additional uh, support companies. And I think that might be what we want to do. Because yeah, we don't really have as many as we need. We should probably get MPs. That would actually help out our garrison armies a bit. So we're going to get that. Oh, but yeah, steel's a, a serious problem, guys. I don't even know how to, how to solve it uh, without... We, we, I mean, we might need to change up our, our trade laws sooner than I would have liked. Because I'm thinking that's what happened with Germany. That they changed up their uh, trade laws. Look at the civilian here. They're doing limited exports, so I don't think they did trade, change them up. Hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, very unfortunate. Uh, they were having so many problems with the, the steel. Just not much we can do about it either. Yeah, not getting as much as they're supposed to do from Sweden now. Yeah, without trading with somebody that I don't really have much of a desire to trade with. I don't want to help them out, but we might have to. Trade with the Japanese. I mean, what's, what's one factory worth of uh, a one civilian factory? What does that help? It's not going to help that much. All right, uh, so we've gotten that done. Let's see what we might want to do next. Could try and get the decryptions done quicker before everybody starts getting all those bonuses. Could also do a passive defense here. This does require 10 civilian factories. Uh, let, let's do the passive bonus first, just in case everybody's, anybody's trying to operate against us. We do have an operative available, uh, so let's go and see what we want to get. Which one? We've got an escape artist and a seducer. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do her. And then as far as intel goes, let's go ahead and build intel against... We'll almost be able to declare war on, on Greece. Let's go ahead and start uh, intel on Moscow. But yeah, we'll be at a point where we could declare war on Greece pretty soon. We just have to put troops up on their borders. 4th of March. But I think we're going to focus on, on Poland first because we just about have this. Now again, I don't know how long it would take to get... Because yeah, it doesn't mean we'll get a war goal on them. We'll just have the claims on those provinces. And that was already bypassed since we already have that territory. Alright, excellent. Uh, so we can go and get the last one. It gets us claims on additional territory here. So we'll wait to do that one. Yeah, I think we should wait to do that. I think it's interesting that we get claims on Jordan and Palestine, though. Yeah, we'll wait to do that one and start working on some of the other stuff over here. We've got a lot of stuff to get, guys. Quite a few things. Uh, so I think we should probably work on the military factories next. Yeah, I think that's going to be what we want to, to do here. Let's get those military factories. Kind of help us out. Because, again, equipment is still the main issue. Uh, you know, we have the manpower to build, and, and we just are short on the equipment. How many factories do we have going towards artillery? Five. We'll keep it, keep it at that. Poland did return Danzig. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. That's right. I forgot. We just got the, uh, the claim here. So let's go ahead and take the claim states. Uh, and we don't need to do all these, of course. Yeah, 85 days. So, is that quicker? How many of that would be 140, 155? Yes, I think. I don't remember how many it cost before. I guess I could still check that. Yeah, 160. So yeah, it is actually quicker. By like, five days. <laughs> so not much quicker. But yeah, it was a little bit quicker to do it this route. To get the claims, and then to do the war goal through there, than it would have been to do just a normal war goal. And we already know we're having issues getting resources, but yeah, there's nothing really to be done about it. Just it is what it is, guys. Yeah, steel's going to be a problem for a while, I think. Now, there is some territory here. If we can get this before the Germans... Yeah, we, we at the very least, we'll get this one. That's eight steel. It's not going to fix our problems. But if we get the 13 there, that'd be super helpful. But I don't think we'll get there in time. Maybe. The Germans don't really have a lot of troops over here. And we're going to decline that. So let me just take a look here and see when we get this. The 6th of 8th of April. I think some of these units are ready to deploy. Uh, you know, they're still waiting on equipment, but we can go ahead and start training them right now. So let's go ahead and get these guys all set up here. And then we'll get them deployed. We'll just deploy those two for right now. Go ahead and set them up into a, a little training army here. And they will be green peasants. We'll get them training up. And then we'll set up all these other units to deploy directly to them, though I didn't give them an order yet, so we're going to have to do that real quick. Let's have them do the area defense here, and they'll just guard the one victory point there, so they'll stay in our capital. Alright, so let's go and get all these guys assigned to just jump right into the training army as soon as they are done. I think we have one more army here. Yeah, these guys don't actually have to go there. We need to change up their icon because that's going to confuse confuse me. Uh, so let's go and just change their icon up. We can make them castles, I suppose. All right, and then yeah, we'll have them deploy there as well. Okay, beautiful. Uh, so since they can't attack us here, let's just go ahead and take uh, a couple units here and get them put into the green army just so we have more troops to, to attack with. Let's take one from each uh, 
each province. Yeah, because they can't really attack us because they don't really have access to the Mediterranean. So yeah, I'm not too worried about naval invasions at this point. And I think two divisions on each province here is plenty enough to, to guard that. So yeah, bring them over here so we'll have an extra three divisions for this, this attack. Alright, excellent. So I'm really trying to, I'm using the Red Army here because I'd like to race across here. Alright, so they have become the, the Communist States of America now. And they have pulled Ireland into the conflict. So far not seeing any naval invasions of Europe from the Allies. Again, they're kind of distracted. Uh, but to get past the defense knocked out, let's go and do it one more time here. Start getting those bonuses. I know we do need the civilian factories for other stuff, obviously. Uh, how are we doing on civilian factories? Currently I have 58. Okay, we'll probably just build some more more military factories. We do need to get the radar though, uh, so we gotta wait till we finish researching that one, don't we? And and there's just nothing we can do for resources, man. You know, resources that we actually need. We need steel, but yeah, as far as like building up, you can get two there. I mean, that's not that helpful. I mean, I mean, we're so desperate that we might have to do it just for two steel, because yeah, we just can't get what we need. Yeah, I guess we will have to do it. We'll do it there. It's not unfortunate. We have to spend civilian factories on that. Yeah, I'm not saying anything else that is uh, worth getting. All right, so let's go and do more military factories for now. Again, I just don't see the point on, on getting the dockyards just yet. It's just not going to be a priority in this campaign, guys. Because, I mean, as I said, you get those those tax. you got to wait to get the tax, the naval tax. And then you get them... Uh, and if you don't get the naval tax, which I suppose you could do, and then you could build a bunch of like outdated ships that would get, you know, it handed to them, it wouldn't be very good. I think they're just that's just a waste of manpower and resources, and I don't think that's a a good use of of our resources uh, to build a bunch of cruddy, outdated ships. So yeah, you gotta wait to get the tax, and and then you get the tax, and and by then it takes you know it takes forever to build a a large fleet, years. Yeah, I just, I just don't think we'll be doing it, guys. There's other ways to. To get around having to build a large fleet. We'll build a little bit of a fleet. I mean, I don't think we need a large one. I wonder what the peace conference was for. Huh. I know that obviously the allies weren't defeated. Oh, okay, that's for, uh, that's because the Confederacy never joined a faction. Alright, a we'll white piece here with these guys. See if there's anything else we need to be aware of here. Huh. Okay, so... There's been peace with several countries that were in the Allies previously. So far it's all been colonies that the British released. That's what it seems like. So they've probably been pulled out of the Allies. And so we're not at war with any of those uh, old colonies. That's what I think happened here. So I'm just kind of going through it, just seeing if there's any uh, countries in here that aren't old colonies, but that does seem to be the case. It seems to be that they're all old colonies. Because Japan just finished up their uh, decolonization, or excuse me, the UK just finished up their the decolonization here. So we'd probably do this quicker with enter. But again, I don't want to just enter through them all because I want to make sure... Because, yeah, it's good to know that some of these countries aren't at war with us anymore. So, yeah, the UK, if you look at the Allies now, there's not going to be as much to them. There's still a lot of countries involved. But, yeah, nowhere near as many as there was before. So, yeah, Japan can now focus a little bit more that they're not at war with all these countries here. Kind of focus on China and then the French territories here and the Philippines. So yeah, they're all free, so that'll actually open up more people to trade with, because we're not at war with them anymore. So we might want to take a look and see if there's anybody else to trade with. It might give us better deals, because yeah, we're getting ripped off on the steel. Pretty hardcore. So yeah, let's just go in and tick back some of these. Yeah, that, that one works just fine. But yeah, maybe... Oh, no, we're good with... We're good with them. Okay, so we're good on all these. And let's go and trade with the Dutch. I know we're going to go to war with them eventually, but... Let's let this update so I know how much I got to trade for. Just one factory's worth. Okay, so the steel's good. 
Uh, as far as rubber, we'll continue trading with Siam, though I think we can actually get a better deal here with these guys. All right, excellent. Yeah, so they had their decolonization that just happened. Still trading for oil, we don't really need to do that anymore. I'm gonna pull that back. Get one of our factories back. Panama just joined the Allies. I don't know why Mexico continues to declare war on people when they clearly have lost. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the Comintern might not end up at war with the Japanese fascist faction. That's what it seems like anyway. Yeah, it seems like they should be able to avoid conflict with them. Uh, we can go and get our last military high command or can do our chief of air force as well. We should we do that one more than likely. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go and do the, the cab one. Yeah, we'll do that one first. That'll only really help the tank units because uh, they're the only ones with the motorized, but I want these guys to be as good as possible. There's only four of them. We don't have many. Uh, we could go ahead and send these additional tanks here so we have a bit more troops for the invasion. Let's let them train for now. Uh, we could move them over there, I suppose, and let them train over there. And Costa Rica just joined the Allies. Yeah, so they're just continuing Please. to extend the Allies with all those war declarations. Mexico's really bad about that. Uh, they bring all those countries into the conflict. Uh, does anybody need training in our, our two armies, that, our main two armies we're invading with? No. So yeah, one thing we're gonna do is just to get these guys up on the, the front. Let's go and put at least um, one of them there. So we have the five. We can just put them both. They don't need to be fully trained, I think. Put them there. We also, also might want to move our mountain troops around so they are uh, up against you know the mountains. So we'll probably want to do that. And then we want to train those two tanks uh, once they get over to their front. So yeah, we want to attack mountains with our mountain troops. So that would be here. Now we'll probably just avoid attacking the mountains. Yeah, you know what, that's probably for the best. Just kind of come up this way and come up behind them. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it actually. Uh, but one problem of course is that all the mountain troops are in the blue army. That's nah, fine. I'm not worried about it, guys. These guys can attack over to here. They get bonuses in the hills, I think, too. Yeah, but yeah, I think we'll just avoid attacking the mountains, go around them, get them cut off, and then uh, destroy them. I think that's the best way to do it. And are any units ready? No. Because, you know, they don't deploy if they don't have all their equipment. Uh, so we did get the radar. Could go ahead and get another radar. I think that's something we'll wait on on getting, though. Uh, we do have 1940 tax available, so let's go in and get these passive bonuses here. All right, so we can go in and build a bit of radar, and what I want to do is build one up on the coast here. I think that's the best way to do this. Probably build it right here. Just have a little bit of radar coverage there to kind of help us out. We're going to want to move the planes over to here as well. Let's see if we have any planes in the stockpile. Yeah, we do. So we can get another close air support, another another fighter as well. Uh, so let's see exactly what we got here. And also see if we have any closer air bases. Yeah, it looks like we do. Uh, these guys don't really need it, of course, because they have full coverage, but there's only 10 of them. So yeah, we're going to move the fighters over to here. And then go ahead and get like a... Let me see something real quick. I think we have... Yeah, we have 200 fighters there. So let's just go and change this up. Let's throw these 100 interwar fighter planes and have them go here while these guys are going to move over to here. Now we could also move them here so we have a bit of coverage there. I suppose that's what we'll do. We'll have them here and let them train, get fully trained up there. And then I never did move my close air support down here. I guess it's irrelevant because we're not even attacking anybody here, guys. Yeah, we're not even fighting anybody right now. We haven't been able to bomb anybody. It looks like there's no ships going through here. We'll keep them there for now, though. We're, we're good on fuel, so it's not that big of an issue. All right, so remember in April is when we get the war goal. The exact date is April 6th, meaning that we will not be able to do this war in this episode. The war will have to wait until the next episode, unfortunately. A little episode of peace here. Uh, just... Trying to get everything all dealt with. So, I almost want to wait on getting anything else. So we can focus our civilian factories on some of the stuff we really need. I think that might be what we end up doing. I, I know we do need to get higher decryption power. But for right now, I think it's okay. 
Yeah, I think we're gonna wait, guys. Did we get all of the, yeah, everything with the intel, naval intel here? I suppose we'll get that one and that'll be the last one we do, guys. That's the last one. And then after that, we'll just uh, focus on building stuff. Focus on getting these military factories constructed. So we can get the equipment issues dealt with because we still have some some equipment shortages. The support equipment obviously is bad. Uh, motorized is kind of stacked up right now, isn't it? Uh, so we can go pull back even further here and just put those into uh, other things that we need. Uh, how are we doing our artillery? Doing pretty good. Uh, maybe infantry equipment? Yeah, looks like infantry equipment we're quite short on. Uh, that will require more steel but less rubber. So we'll go ahead and pull back on... Ooh. We'll pull back with Siam. Si and with the steel, who has steel for us? Uh, looks like the, the Chinese do. So we'll help them out even further. Just take a look, see how the war here has gone. Does look like the Japanese are having a little bit more success than the last time we looked at them. Well, maybe not. Yeah, they are actually losing in Manchuria. And now the Chinese are invading into Korea. I just saw the invasions up along here and I was like, oh, they're doing all right. They are not doing all right. Japan is just struggling right now. Yeah, they're struggling. Uh, Italy's having a lot of success in Africa. Quite a bit of success. A surprising amount of success, actually. Uh, we can go ahead and do the army maneuvers next, I suppose. Now that we've gotten that one there, we can't even get this one until we've gotten that one. Could also get the bonuses here, and that would also get us a free synthetic refinery, which is always helpful. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and go down this route uh, first, and then we'll do the army ones. Actually, no, no, no. Let's change that up, guys. That's not the best way to do this at all. We need to start getting these research bonuses that we get from here. So let's go on to the army maneuvers. All right, so we have uh, those two military factories we just got from the focus. So let's go and get them assigned. I suppose it's like what we really ought to be building, besides infantry equipment, is uh, stuff for our tanks, for our tank units. Still need more planes as well. I mean, there's just so much stuff we need. Uh, we can go and continue trading with China, so let's go and do that. All right, guys, so we're almost there. Uh, to, to be able to declare war on them again. We'll do that next episode, but I'd like to get up to that point. I feel like that's a good stopping point right before we declare war on the Polish. All right, so uh, these guys here are still training up. We'll keep them training rather than putting them into the army here. Uh, these tanks are, are not going to be done training uh, by, the, by the time the war starts, so we'll have to stop them from training. They'll just have to get their experience in battle. It's still snow all up along there, so it's it's good that we're not declaring war just yet. Hopefully the snows will subside by the time that the war starts. Let's see. Alright, so we've gotten more rubber, we've gotten the advanced machine tools, we've got everything we need here, and oil is not an issue. Uh, we're actually fully stockpiled. And I think a big part of the problem is, is that we can't stockpile very much, so we might want to fix that. Could we want to get additional radar here? But again, there's just so much stuff we need that I think we should work on that. So what I think we're going to start with is, that let's start doing the planes, guys. Let's get the, the newest fighters. Those will be helpful, both against the Allies and against the Soviets. And not getting the tungsten from Norway that we need. All right, so we'll just stop that and we'll trade with somebody else. Trade with them. All right, so what is uh, Portugal doing here? We had them go communist. Okay, so we don't know what faction they're gonna join, but I assume it'll be the common turn. Uh, we did get the Navy Department, so we are not done here, guys. All right, so let's go and get this uh, military factory assigned. See where we want to... I, I think we're gonna go full 10 factories here, really start focusing on the tanks a little bit. Let me get one going there, since I think we're still short there. Uh, support equipment problem is almost dealt with. Uh, infantry equipment is still short, actually. Uh, but I feel like as that efficiency gets better, then it won't be a problem anymore. So let's go ahead and start working on the planes. All right, excellent. All right, so almost there, one day away. I'm getting it done. Then we'll be able to declare war. All right, so. We'll be declaring war on them, and we'll be calling on our, all of our allies. We'll do that in the beginning of the next episode. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a war against Poland. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. They do have a lot more troops on our border now. I'm guessing they pulled troops off of the Soviet border. 
because uh, they see us as the main threat. Uh, so a lot more troops on the border, so it won't be as easy, particularly right here, guys, which is where I wanted to attack into. Uh, from here with the the tanks, we might have to do something a little bit different because there's six divisions there. We'll see how much success we have there. I didn't stop these guys from training, so we do need to do that. Might wait a couple days, actually, to declare war until we get those troops, uh, at, at the very least, get the organization back up. Uh, they don't really need the planning bonus, so we can we can be patient. Although they already have the planning bonus, that's right. I was thinking while they trained, they lost it, but they don't. Uh, so just get the organization back up. Yeah, we'll just wait a little bit, and we'll declare war on them in a couple days. Uh, and that also gives us more time to fix the infantry equipment issue and the support equipment issue. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. It's just a period of peace, of course. Uh, just uh, and, and you know, it's all about the fact that we can't declare war in Italy, although. Now it's letting me justify a war goal against them. Is it because we can now cancel non-aggression pact with Japan? There we go. All right, so that means that as soon as we finish the war in Poland, which is probably good that we got this taken care of early, uh, rather than do the, the Italian and, and Bulgarian ones as soon as we were able to in March. Yeah, I think this was the best way to do it, guys, honestly. Because uh, that'll allow us to make sure that Poland doesn't join the common turn. So we can get Poland knocked out, and then from there, we can focus on uh, getting this Italian and, and Bulgarian countries, these guys, taken out on our borders. And then after that, we could go after Greece. Yeah, that's what we'd want to do. Uh, so that's the, the plan. Poland, Italians and Bulgarians, and then the Greeks. And then from there, there's really not anything else to do except for war with the Soviets. Unless we were to help with the invasion of, of Britain, which I guess we could help with that. Uh, and that might be a good option, actually. So we could do that instead, and then do the war against the Soviets. Uh, I'd love to hear you guys' input, though. Uh, and, yeah, we're going to end the episode here. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.